You can submit again, uh, and then we'll just take the latter one. All right, so let's start chapter four, and let's talk about formal relational language. Okay, so learning goals uh, identify the basic operators of relational algebra, RA is going to call it. Use RA to create queries that include combining relational algebra operators and given a uh, relational algebra query and a table of schemas and instances, you need to be able to compute the results. Okay, so simple following rules for the chapter. Uh, I, do, uh, I do encourage you to read the textbook on this as well. Um, it's very well written. Okay, so when we last left databases, we'll learn that they're excellent things. We we'll learn how to conceptually model them with ER models. We we'll learn how we can turn those into relational models and tables. And we also got into how we can optimize them. So we looked at chapter 19, where we looked at different normal forms where we can get rid uh, of redundancy in our relational uh, database. Um, now we're almost ready as well for it. So we're almost there. But first, balance. Anyone see karate kid? So Daniel keeps on wanting to fight and learn all these new uh, ways of hitting someone and killing people, but the master keeps on telling him just do the balance and get the foundation correctly. So chapter four, we're gonna get the foundation of what you need in order to do SQL queries. Relational algebra is used inside any SQL, uh, inside any PBMS is being used. So a re relational al algebra is used in order to optimize the queries that you're later gonna write in SQL. Okay? The backbone is mostly mathematics, and, uh, SQ and relational uh, algebra was also invented by a mathematician. Okay? So you're gonna see why the mathematics is gonna come in. It's mostly uh, procedural, but it's partially procedural. So, and what I mean by that is that we have some operators and the order in which you uh, use those operators is important. But other than that, it's not like other languages like Java or C where you're gonna be writing a bunch of uh, um, statements. Okay, so that's why we say it's partially procedural. It allows you to modify Thank you. Thank you. One more Relational queries allow you to manipulate and modify the data that you have stored inside your tables. And again, it's not a programming language. It doesn't allow you to work on any complex data structure that you have in mind. You can't have link lists, you cannot have the trees. It only works on tables. And what you do is it allows you to create, delete, and modify values in those tables, and it allows you to query the values that you have inside those tables. Users don't need to know how you navigate through a data, the tables in order to get that information. All we're going to be doing in 304 is we're going to learn how we can ask for those information. 
404, we get more into how those information are retrieved and given back to you. Okay, so this is just a summary uh, slide of the operators that we're going to be talking about in details. Okay, so relational algebra was introduced by Ted Codd in 1970. And uh, Gage is a mathematician, so he's looking at tables and, rel and relations from a mathematical point of view rather than uh, SQL and uh, tables and the, uh, the applications. Okay, so don't worry about these, we're going to talk about each of these in detail throughout the, the lecture today. Let's have a running example for today. This is a running example we're going to be using. So this, uh, we have three different relations here. We have movies, and for each movie, we keep the movie ID, title of the movie, and the year when it was uh, first uh, created. We have movie stars. So these are our star IDs. Each actor actress has a star ID, a name, and a gender. And stars in is a table that relates our movie stars with our movies. So stars in says that this movie ID, which is coming from this movie ID, had this star play in it, and this is the character that was playing. All right. Any questions so far? Yeah, and these, this is examples of what these relations could look like. So we could have a bunch of movies, their IDs, their title, and their year. We have movie stars, and also stars in will have a movie ID, a star ID, and a character. Okay, so movie ID 4, Indiana Jones, star ID 1, Harrison Ford played in that, and the character is Indiana Jones, as an example. Let's look at the different operators that we can use through relational algebra. Mike. Didn't the previous slide have an integrity constraint violation? Um, it had an ID 3 and there were only two actors with one, I, one, two. Uh, so yeah, and stars in Dorothy Gale, star ID 3. So we have star ID 1, 2, and 3, which is showing on my uh, version of the slide, but not on yours. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why the bottom of the slides are, are cut off um, on the projector. But that's how the slide meant to be. <laughs> What's blocked? So you can assume there's a third movie story out there for now. Okay, so now let's look at different uh, operators that we can use on our relations. And uh, since this was designed by a mathematician, we're going to see a lot of Greek letters defining our operators here. So sigma is going to be our selection. And when we have a relation, we want to have a way in order to select some of the tuples based on some uh, criteria. Okay, so as an example, let's say if this is the list of all our movies, I can say select from this table, from my table movies, the tuples where the year is bigger than 1940. Okay, so if, if on the top is my actual movie table, then when I run this query, selecting only those movies, so inside the brackets there I can see the table that I'm operating on, that's the table I'm operating on, and through that table I only want to select those that in um, column year, the value there is bigger than 1940. And what I'm going to get back is only two movies, uh, where the year is bigger than 1940. Any questions? But that means you can find, and let me give you the relation again, all male stars. So let's see this one again. 
so you're familiar with the, uh, with the syntax. Sigma is the select operator. This is how you're going to write your selection. And then here, you need the actual movie that you need to be operating on. Any questions? Right, so throughout, throughout the, the lecture, feel free to talk to your neighbors all the time. Then you only keep one of them. 
relational algebra is going to be the same. It's only going to be working on different items. If you have two items which are similar, you can remove one of them from your set. This is not going to be how SQL works. So this is one of the main differences between relational algebra and SQL that we're going to see later. SQL is implemented on bags, which does allow you to have duplicates. Set theory and relational algebra does not allow you to have duplicates. Let's see some examples. So this is my movie, um, this is my movie relation. If I use the pi operator with title and year, that means that I only want title and year to be returned as part of the after result. Okay, so if I run this query, what I will get is I will get titles and year of everything. If I just want to, um, if I just want to project on year, then only years will be uh, returned. Now as you can see, the first two examples, four rows are being returned, whereas in the third one, I only have three rows being returned. If you consider each row to be an item, if two rows are absolutely identical to each other, that means there's a duplicate. So that means in the second example, when I have title and year, Although I have a year 1939 in both of those, that is not a duplicate because the entire row is not similar to each other. Because the title is different, those two are not similar. But when I'm projecting just on a year, that would mean I would just have the value 1939 twice, and since I have it twice, one of them will be removed, so this will be returned as the answer if using relational algebra. And at the end here, you can also combine different operators that we have. So the operator is saying that from the movie table, first select those rows that have year um, after 1940. So first two rows are going to be selected, which are bigger than 1940. After that, that table is taken, and the second operator, which is the pi operator, is going to be use on that table and it's only going to return the title and the year uh, columns. In this example, the question is can we do this in a different uh, order? Can we first get the projection and then the selection? Yes? In this example, we can. In this example, we can say, well, hold on, let's just first take these two columns first, and then let's operate on those in order to do a selection. That is not always the case. We'll have examples later where you can't do that. But in places where this is possible, it's part of the job of the optimizer to have a look at the two different scenarios and try to decide whether it's a better option to first do the selection operator or if it's a better option to do the projection operator. One way that you can think about this conceptually is that it really depends on whether you have a lot of rows in your table or whether you have a lot of columns. Which one is it that if you get rid of, you will be saving most of the uh, most time in order before going to all those values? Okay, so again, the, the order in which these operators are, are done that's going to be part of the job of the optimizer when we get back to SQL and DBMSs. Any questions? All right, then I want you to find IDs of actors who have starred in the movie. so you guys can click whenever you're done.
Right next click whenever you're done. do is you can try to return the solution for that query and then check to see which one of these uh, rows actually exists in that uh, relation.
intersection and difference. Okay, so that's also an operator. You can have a union operator which now takes two relations and takes a union of those two. You need to be careful when you're using these operators because you need to take two relations which are compatible with each other before you can union or, uh, or, or take their intersections. Okay, so let's see an example. Let's say now I have movie stars and singers. And I want to see whether I can take the union of those or not. If you want to use these operators, the union, intersection, and set difference, you need to make sure that the attributes are compatible. And what we mean is that, first of all, you need to have a first number of attributes in both relations. And secondly, corresponding attributes must have the same domain. Okay, so the first attribute in both is a string, the second one is an integer, and the third one is something else, but it needs to be similar. Note that they don't have to have the same names as part of their col uh, as the, uh, the columns. So I have name for the second column, and here I have s name. That is not going to stop me from taking the union of these. If I'm going to take the union, I'm going to have everything from the first relation and everything in the second relationship inside one table, and again, I'm going to get rid of redundancies. So any duplicates, I'm going to take out. Okay, so you can see that um, I have one duplicate, and I'm going to be removing that when I take the union of these two. If I'm doing the intersection, I'm only going to be adding um, tuples where that tuple is inside both of these relations into my uh, intersection. Okay, so intersection is going to look through these two, and I'm only going to be adding tuples where, uh, where it's in both of these relations. And the difference is going to look at the first relation, and anything in the second relation is going to be taken away from that relation. So movie star minus singer is going to give me all the movie stars that are not singers. Just note that movie star minus singer gives you a different relation to singer minus movie star. For the other two, it's the same. So you can uh, you can do, you can change the order for uh, singer union movie star. That's fine. You can change the order for uh, intersection as well. But for difference, you're going to get a different uh, answer if you change the order. Any questions? Right. So fine the name of stars that are singers but not movie stars apologies for the diagram
Then you would get it. The only reason why I'm not on that is that the only name and the gender was the same way as the same. You should be not like it. But they didn't say that it's not that you can make it. different names? Yeah. Then you would still get it. So if the story is not that you can make it, as long as there's some other on just one table. But who 
boring just one table is boring. Let's see how we can combine information from multiple tables with using relational algebra operators. The Cartesian product is going to be taking one relationship and you multiply it with another relationship. For now, let's assume that the attributes are disjoint. So for now, let's assume that all of the attributes that you have in one table is different from another one. Let's look at this example. So what's going to happen here is, these are the three rows that you have here. These are the four rows that you have here. If you do the cross set, if you do the cross product, then you're going to get this row combined with all these rows. So you get Harrison Ford male with one one and hand solo. It's taking this one and it's multiplying by this. So this row with this row, you get this row with com combined with this row, and you get this row combined with this row. So the first three rows all have values coming from stars in relation combined with all the different values in the movie star. Okay, so just a warning that this isn't really useful for now. Okay, so basically this means if you have a bunch of students and we have a bunch of courses, the cross product says that every student has taken every course. Right? It's not really showing who has actually taken those courses, but it's saying that every student is combined with all the different courses that we have. Okay, so here you can see Harrison Ford being male, being combined with a character which doesn't really correspond to it, and also Harrison Ford with a character which does correspond. If everything is disjoint, everything is fine. You're not going to get any duplicate over your attributes. If you have names which are similar in both of these, when you do the cross product, you're going to have that same value being there multiple times. And you cannot have a relation where an attribute name is same between different attributes. Okay, so this here is problematic. If you have relations where they share some name in their attributes, what's done is that the name is ignored and it's going to be given a number which corresponds uh, to the in order. So the first one's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this one, since it's a duplicate, it's going to be renamed by 1. And this one will be renamed to 5. Automatically. Any questions about the Cartesian product? So if I have, if I, if my movie star relation has three values and my story has four values, how many values am I going to have in my Cartesian product? Twelve. Thank you. Could could any of those actually be redundant? Duplicates? If there was a duplicate, then that means that at that row in one of the relations should have already been a duplicate. Since that's not happening, you're actually going to get 12 different distinct values. Any questions? Well, the fact that this is being renamed automatically is kind of problematic. So we have a renaming uh, operator which allows you to take an attribute and rename it. Okay, so because we can't really say we're only going to have relations where all the names are different, right? Because you can't do that, we're going to have the renaming operator. And what the renaming operator does, it says, this is a relation that I'm working on. And I want one to 
be renamed to star ID 1. And I want attribute 5 to be renamed star ID 2. You can also just take the name of that, the current name of that uh, attribute and rename it as well. Okay, so you can either wait till afterwards when you have the value 1 and 5 and then rename it. Or before getting there, you can say star ID is going to be ID and then do the cross product of the two relations. Either of those would work. Any questions? Okay, now let's look at some more operators. Let's also have a look at join, division, and assignment. Okay, so these are also additional operators that we're going to be looking at. Join is shown with a bow tie. I don't know, they were out of um, symbols, I guess. Um, or it just kind of looks cute and it seems like you're uh, combining things together in the middle. Uh, but it's quite hard to add to PowerPoint, so I don't know. I didn't find it really useful. Um, what the condition means is that you want to do the cross product, but on that cross product, now you want to have some conditions. Okay, so the result is going to be fewer tuples than the cross product. You'll take the cross product, and from that, you're going to be adding some conditions, and, if, and only if that condition is whole, those attributes will be added to your final table. This kind of join is also called the theta join. Okay, so if you, if you hear that name, that also means this join. Now let's take this example again. We have movie stars and star uh, and stars in. Now let's take the theta joint and say that I only want to have tuples where movie star dot star id and this is saying movie star and star id. So I'm referring to this star id because I have two different star ids. Is smaller than star zine dot star id. Okay, so what could happen is that the big cross product could be built. You can imagine it like that. And then I'm going to look at this condition, and I'm only going to keep tuples where the movie star that star ID is smaller than stars in that star ID. This one. Again, this doesn't particularly mean anything, and it's kind of a silly um, query to run. However, it does show the concept that you can have a condition which is being applied on your cross product. Any questions? Okay, so this one's quite hard. Do it on your own first.
let's finish the first round in five. Four, three, two, one, and six. Right, discussion with your neighbors. <laughs> see whether it could be part of that, uh, that result or not. So as you can see, the relation that we're asking for first has the two columns coming from relation R, and then it has the three columns that are coming from relation B. Right? So if, a, if I want A to be in there, that means that I need to have 1, 2 to be in R, and 2, 6, 8. Um, to be in S. Do I have 1, 2 in R? I do. Do I have 2, 6, 8 in S? I do not. So the first one could not be the right answer. Second one says that I have 1, 2, and then I have 4, 4, 6. Do I have 4, 4, 6 in S? Note that for these, I don't even check if the condition is true or not. Right? I'm not even checking to see whether R dot A is smaller than S dot C or R dot B is smaller than S dot D. Because for that to be true, I need that row to be first in the cross product of the two. And for the first two answers that I have there, that's not part of the cross product. 
Let's look at C. So C has 5 and 6 in R and 2, 4, 6 in S. Do I have 5 and 6 in R? I do. Do I have 2, 4, 6 in S? I do. Okay, so this could potentially be true. Now I look at the condition. The condition says R dot A is smaller than S dot C. Is 5 smaller than 4? It's not, so that's not true. B is not true, so E is the right answer. Okay, so first step, check whether that rule could be a possibility. Next, what I'm doing is I'm trying to see whether, uh, whether the conditions hold or not. Where did you get 446? Where did I get 446? Uh, B. B says 1, 2, 4, 4, 6. What if I want to actually get this relation? If I ask you to actually draw that relation, one way would be to do the cross product of the two. That will give you nine different rules. And then go through each of those nine rules and see whether that condition holds or not. If the condition holds, you keep it in that table. If it doesn't, you remove it. And then you have a relation where that condition holds and is part of the cross product. Any questions? Yeah, algorithmically, that's what a database does anyway, right? You pass those uh, parameters to it, and it's almost always a brute force uh, sort, or is it a bit different? So the question is, could it be optimized? Yeah. And it could be optimized. So it doesn't really need to get that cross product first and then go over that. What, for example, what you can do is you can look at values in column A and just column C, and those where this is small, where the condition doesn't hold, you already know that that cannot be part of the answer. So anything you can do to reduce the size of your tables before joining them is always a lot more efficient than joining it.